Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for the Captains of Cement and Concrete Leader Series. Today, we have with us Amanada, the COO of Yandu Cement in Saudi Arabia. Thank you for joining us, Amma. My pleasure. Great. So let's jump straight in. I think the question on everybody's lips is, um, how has COVID-19 um, affected, affected your business, positively, negatively, and what are you doing to mitigate the risks? Uh, of course, COVID-19 was a strong event this year and uh, it rocked all the businesses around the world and uh, we are like everyone. But we had uh, started uh, COVID-19 with a very strong emergency response plan and we managed to uh, um, pass through since March till date without any stoppages. And uh, we continued production and sales as well. So we did good this year from a financial and uh, operational point of view. Uh, in addition to uh, the main advantage of COVID-19, it showed the resilience of the team to handle such uh, pressure and such uh, disturbance in the supply chain and in the communication, in even the presence and the ability to move freely within the site. But the main advantage it put, uh, it has put an underline and it has made it very important for top management to consider digitalization. And uh, we actually had used that in our favor to the max and accelerated our uh, digital transformation plans uh, in a very good way. And we had a very, st we had a very strong support from the top management because of that. That's quite amazing that, um, that COVID-19 has actually brought so much good to Yambu Cement. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about the, um, the general, general challenges in the industry? So besides, besides COVID-19, um, over the next five to 10 years, what do, you, what do you forecast the biggest challenges to be in the cement production industry? Generally, globally, uh, there is a surplus supply and uh, lower demand, which means that the pressure, uh, price are under pressure, the operations are under pressure. Uh, it's very low investment around the world. In addition to, uh, since uh, Paris Convention and the uh, direction of the world in, towards uh, sustainability and ESG, uh, cement industry, though it only contributes to 5% of the human-made uh, greenhouse gases, and uh, it's not the top of the carbon uh, CO2 uh, emission in industry, the transportation and power come way on top of it. It contributes to less than 5% of that, but cement industry has always been in the center of, as a bad guy of emissions and uh, CO2. Uh, so it, it puts a lot of The cement industry from an operational uh, and technology point of view. In addition to uh, cement industry is uh, in a bit of a struggle between its, I uh, would say, modernization to fit uh, new talents and uh, I would say the new generation requirements. We are not uh, sexy enough industry for the new generations, but uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I cannot say that I'm an old generation, I'm a 42 guy, but still um, dealing with 25s and 22s and 28s, it's not as easy as it was 10 years ago. Mm, I see. Yeah. But with a uh, digital transformation, the, the way that industry is transforming and the current new challenges from sustainability and environmental management and uh, uh, safety uh, and uh, social uh, impact. So the industry is evolving in a way uh, to match the requirements of this uh, generation. Uh, last but not least, it's the energy part and it's related also to the CO2 because now coal is not, looked at as a good fuel and the second fuel is H4 which is again not a very environmental friendly uh, fuel 
in addition to most of the sustainable power solution uh, like uh, solar and uh, wind energy are not suitable for heavy industry. They cannot be the main source of power in, he in heavy industry. So this is, I would say, these are the global uh, challenges for cement industry. If you look regionally, which is more, more focus on GCC, I would say that uh, uh, indifferent from everywhere else, it's still sustainability. But you would add to that in, in for example, Saudi Arabia specifically, the energy uh, uh, policy of the country is not very clear. It's an oil dependent country. And uh, HFO is the main fuel for everything. And currently with its commitments on Paris Convention, it's becoming uh, harder to continue using HFO which will have a major uh, industrial, I would say, technological change uh, and also cost because it's new investments and it's, it's a major investment if all the industry will change to uh, solid fuel or to even green fuels, whatever the change is, it's going to have a, a strong impact. So the energy policy, I would say, is a second big challenge. In addition to the market, also like well, else there is a surplus of supply to demand. There is almost 40% uh, surplus in the supply versus demand, which is putting a lot of pressure on the sector. Last but not least, you know that Saudi Arabia is a young nation with currently a quite high uh, unemployment rate. So with uh, nationalization uh, uh, rules and laws and policies, the, uh, the talent retention and uh, also uh, talent acquisition is not as easy uh, as it used to be at least. But to be honest, the talent is available. It's only because it's uh, still a young work environment uh, or a young market for uh, talents in Saudi Arabia. So you, are, you still have to spend two or three years of competency development, which is a cost and a delay uh, in uh, productivity of, you could say, 30% of the workforce at least. Yeah, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. And I suppose in the long term, that all has to be taken into consideration. Um, on the flip side of that, can you tell us a little bit about some opportunities that the industry is seeing? Um, I think, you know, we, we talk a lot about, um, you know, energy consumption, um, but we also talk a lot about digitization. Um, where do you see the biggest opportunities for growth and expansion in the next five to 10 years? Uh, to be honest, uh, I would say that the cement industry is so facing lots of challenges, but because it's, uh, as, you, as you know, of course, it's a very important strategic industry that no one can so far live without. So the, the industry as a, as a whole is taking these challenges as an opportunity to transform the business. This has actually started maybe five or six years ago. So lots of things are changing within the cement industry technologically, uh, competency, talent management, uh, digital transformation, of course, on top of it, environmental management, and on top of all that, the energy, which is actually covering all of that inside it, because whatever you do, it ends up in optimization, consistently performance, and consistently better uh, consumption. So I would say that um, uh, energy uh, energy policies in most of the industry has changed a lot. The performance uh, has changed in, in a very strong way. Uh, you would see uh, in the coming 10, 15 years, a shift of uh, what, what used to be the classic model of cement industry, which is uh, dusty, big, uh, lots of people. It will change to way much less dusty and smaller, uh, it, people are going back to smaller sizes, uh, even in grinding mills. And it used to be, um, uh, I would say, uh, a race for bigger capacities. Now it's not like that because of the surplus in the market, of course. Yeah. And in addition, that capital investments are not that much in cement industry because the CAGR all over the world has went down uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. So I would say in the coming 10 years, uh, the main transformation would be on how the industry looks technologically and uh, from a performance aspect point of view. 
Absolutely. I'm glad that you mentioned that as an opportunity because it leads us to the next question. So in terms of the fourth industrial revolution, you mentioned you've discussed a lot about um, driving efficiencies and uh, digitization um, and digital transformation. Can you give us a few examples, maybe one or two, of how Yambu Cement is implementing you know, digital technology and how you're responding to the fourth industrial revolution? In Yambu Cement in 2016, we started a strategy we called the Performance Improvement Plan. It was a two years strategy, and it was focused to uh, make uh, plant ready for uh, high efficiency rates, mm -hmm. maximum asset utilization, and full automated operation. So I would say this strategy was aimed at maturing the plant uh, from um, an automation point of view, which is saturating industry 3.0 and baseline uh, 4.0. In 2017, which is uh, two years down the, this strategy, we started a new strategy called uh, PC Pass, People, uh, Cost, uh, Productivity, assets and sustainability. Under sustainability, we induced uh, two main uh, levers for uh, specifically for industry 4.2, which is to finalize uh, digital control systems in the plant and migrate all the data to be usable on technical information systems and finalize uh, enterprise uh, cross-wide uh, softwares so uh, we, in 2018, we finalized that. In 2019, we started the optimization and utilization of these tools on business intelligence level and migrating to clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2020, the target was to, uh, I would say, unify all the systems that we have and increase the mobility of all workforce and move from uh, disks or uh, laptops a control of, uh, of equipment to uh, handhelds. Mm -hmm. And we are doing uh, a good step. And our target is to mature uh, fully the industry 4.0 and induce artificial intelligence on main assets by the end of 2021. Oh, that's fantastic. It's very exciting actually to see so much change and so much development. Um, um, my last question today, we, you mentioned earlier that um, Saudi Arabia was kind of a, a special case and that it's a new nation and there's some uh, regional aspects to, to cement production in Saudi Arabia. Can you tell us just a little bit more about the regional factors, so not only Saudi Arabia, but the Middle East um, that affect cement, the cement production industry? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, you need to know that within Middle East and uh, GCC, there are... Uh, three of the biggest uh, 10 top countries in the world producing cement, Algeria, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia, with capacities around almost uh, 80 to 70 to 90 million tons a year. So it's quite an important industry in North Africa and GCC, uh, where it's also, it also contains heavy populated uh, countries like Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia to some extent. So those countries are on the development uh, track. They are on the urbanization track. So the consumption of cement in these countries plus Africa, of course, which is a developing nation, is quite high. So the cement industry is in the focus of the development strategies of these countries. In addition to export to Africa, so 60% of uh, Africa cement comes from uh, North Africa and GCC countries. Consequently, uh, its cement production is important to the full region. Uh, it's facing the challenges I mentioned earlier globally, but with, with a different, uh, I would say, uh, face uh, that is available on other countries. You have two, two sides. Uh, in, in that region. You have oil-rich countries which are facing the challenges in a completely different manner than non-oil uh, countries. So you, if you take two clusters, you have on one side uh, Saudi Arabia on the lead 
phase of it. And on the other side, Egypt, Algeria, and Morocco uh, leading that phase. So let's talk about the non-oil rich countries. In these countries, uh, coal is the main fuel, which means a lot of environmental uh, issues according to uh, Paris Convention requirements. And all of these countries have signed the convention and are committed to CO2 uh, dropping down. You, you also need to understand that the maturity of environmental uh, laws from waste management point of view in these countries is still in many cases underdeveloped. I would say the most mature one is Morocco. Other than that, they are still behind. Uh, so alternative fuels is not as easy as it sounds. It's, it might be easy technologically, but it's not easy from a supply chain and uh, country management point of view. So, uh, so you have the energy uh, aspect and you have the uh, economy aspect. Most of these countries have suffered uh, a change in regimes uh, many, many times in the last three to 10 years. Consequently, there is, the economy is still, uh, I would say, coping with uh, new norms and uh, foreign investment is not as much as it used to be. So the pressure on the, uh, on the industry from, an, uh, from a capital investment point of view is also high. So technological changes are not easy. In addition to uh, the high number of population, which is reflected, of course, in uh, high, higher than usual rates of unemployment. Consequently, it's another different pressure on the industry from an OPEX point of view. In the oil-rich uh, countries, the face is different. Uh, like uh, you have two, two faces for it. You have uh, Emirates on one side and Saudi Arabia on one side. Emirates, for, it's an oil rich company, but it's a country, but it's all dependent on coal. Mm -hmm. And it has a very highly mature uh, waste management system. So alternative fuels is quite uh, usable there. I would say they have a, a margin of around 15%, which is still. Uh, I would say uh, low compared to Europe, which is 35 or 40, 45% even in some countries. So there's still work to be done there to meet uh, targets. Saudi Arabia on the other side, it's a, it's a high in the top 10 producing companies, countries for uh, cement worldwide. Uh, the cement industry is quite very uh, strong in Saudi Arabia, 17 countries, uh, but the market is under tremendous pressure. There is almost one year of inventory on ground and the supply is higher than demand by almost 40% in addition to the nationalization side. So the, the global uh, challenges are applicable on the region, more or less the same, but uh, or the uh, our dynamics of handling this challenges is completely different in that region and unique because of the uh, factors around these countries. So interesting and it, everything seems to be very complicated and intertwined. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'd like to say thank you very much for, for your insights. Um, it's uh, very, very interesting for the audience. So thank you for giving us your perspective today. Aminata, the COO of Yambu Cement in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure.